I think I'm live. All right. Make sure nothing else is playing here. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wire Wednesday, number 28. Number 28. Number 28. Sorry, kind of been a long morning. Had to fix my car <laughs> so we could take the kids to school. I wasn't going to do one, but something interesting came up, and I wanted to possibly show it to everyone and uh, I'll explain it in a little bit but um, the thing that <laughs> is interesting about this is going to be uh, we were going to have a, another interview so if you missed it last week we interviewed Voices from the Bench Steve and I from Zara Dental Lab interviewed Voices from the Bench the host Barb and Elvis and if you want to see that uh, make sure you look up like before Kate came along why are Wednesday I always told him I go he is Neil Armstrong because he's the first person that put his face on on YouTube and was brave enough to do it and <laughs> sorry uh, anyway uh, look that up it's a really good interview uh, and if you haven't looked their podcast up yet it's it's on iTunes it's everywhere you can find a podcast and they even have it on YouTube so be sure and subscribe to their channel um, but stay tuned possibly next week we're gonna have another interview with a dentist slash ortho lab technician which should be very interesting um, but this week I'm gonna do a short video uh, and it as you saw from the title it is going to be a gelb splint so uh, but I haven't done a gelb splint in a while and let me adjust my camera here. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. Again, you know how I love to do this. I live stream these things with no practice, and we'll see if I crash and burn or if I'm a success. But you get to see it live, and that's that's the fun of it. So uh, let me introduce you to the thing we're working on. This is my articulated case. Um, I ran out of rubber bands, so I actually, here's a little tip. I had to use these, uh, y'all recognize these? These are the keys for RPEs, and they I just super glued them into place. Now, to find this gap, the instructions from the doctor were, hey, uh, make this splint exactly like, like the last one. And the good thing is the doctor sent the old splint. Even though it's all nasty and stuff, I had to disinfect it. But they sent the old splint. So I actually was able to put it back on the model and I articulated the case that way because they want it the same exact thickness as the one before. So I put the old one on there, put the models together and articulated it that way. And that way I have the exact opening that she had before. So those who don't know, Gelb Splint is a, um, it is posterior acrylic only it and it doesn't cover the interior and usually there is a bar down here this one did not have a bar uh, this is probably why it broke but she you could tell she had this for years so she takes care of it but the doctor want me to strengthen it and put a bar in there just in case and I'm going to still cover it with acrylic now I have separated the um, I put separator on it, I prepped it, I put a little bit of wax on the sides, um, and I have set this bar using fix-it powder. I promise I will get you a video on fix-it powder. I get it from JBC. You use regular monomer and you use this special fix-it powder, and it sets up in three minutes without a use of a pressure pot, which is very, very cool. Um, Oh, Perry Lane, working hard on night, or in about an hour. <laughs> See, we're we're both doing night guards, so thank you, Perry Lane, for letting me know I'm not alone. Now this is is a gelb, and I have something new, and I haven't used this in years, and I had to call Priscilla over at uh, JBC to see if she still carried it, and it's patent pending, but it is a silicone mold. And uh, you actually, it's a mold for your splints and things. 
and you can put acrylic in here, let it set up to the gel state, and then transfer it over to your uh, model, and then you can you know adjust it and things, and get it uh, get it right where you want it, and do the articulator and stuff. So you don't have to sit there and just do salt and pepper, salt and pepper, salt and pepper. It uh, see, I'm trying to get I'm not getting the whole thing in here. There we go. I'm going to adjust the brightness on this. It's a little dark for me. Hang with me for a second. There it goes. It's a little bit better. So this is what I'm going to attempt to do today <laughs> is uh, do this gelb splint using this new mold that I got. Now, I haven't done this in years so you're gonna see me crash and burn or it's gonna be a success so don't don't look at this mold as a failure if I fail it's just for me not doing it now before I said I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna do acrylic live anymore because of the temperature of all these lights that are on here but the temperature in here is 67 degrees. We are having a cold front here in Texas. And so I think I'll be able to survive. All right, so let me change cameras here. So the packet comes with these easy liners, easy form liners. And you lay it, they're like a certain type of plastic and you lay it inside of here. And then I'm going to just fill up the posteriors. I don't need the interior. I'm going to do that by hand. But I'm going to fill up the posterior sections and let it set up. And while it's setting up, I'm going to add acrylic to the around the bar here. Uh, and then I'm going <laughs> to, to flip it over onto here and mold it into place. So again, we'll see if that happens. So I'm going to start with some monomer. Get some polymer in here. And again, I'm just doing the the back here. And I may not do all of it. This comes with two pages of instructions. So, yeah, actually, I don't think it's even in her uh, catalog. You have to actually call and ask for it um, if you want to try it. I'm, I'm waiting on a full night guard to come in. Um, we normally use the cigar method. This should be interesting. Priscilla is a superstar. Yeah, Perry, you're right. She came up with this, and I saw her demo it. And of course, she makes it look way easy. Uh, for those that don't know, Cigar Method, I believe what Perry's talking about in the comments is um, the dough method, meaning you mi get a mi big mixing cup. And that reminds me to get a mixing cup out here. Kind of dirty there. You get a big mixing cup and uh, put your monomer and polymer in there and then uh, let it set up a little bit into the dough state and then you can roll it out like a cigar and put it on your models. Now you can use gloves. If you're sensitive to acrylic, you can use gloves. There we go. I think this, I'm gonna let this sit or as the instructions say, rest. And while it's resting, I'm going to sprinkle this. Now, I do need to put the name in here, so let me do that real quick off camera. For those that are asking, use a P-Touch labeler. I can't see it that far away. <laughs> Come on. There we go. Add a little witness to it. And I just put it on the intaglio surface right there. 
So, carry that. Again, I'm just making sure I get... This is kind of like what uh, Steve does in his uh, Biostar retainer videos. It makes it a little slurry and covers the wire before you press this down. I'm going to put just a little bit of a dusting on here. I don't think you really have to. This thing, depending on what state of affair it's in, when you uh, do your... Sorry, I'm thinking while I'm working. Anybody else have a hard time multitasking while they're working? And of course, I haven't done this in years, so... It is. This is going to be interesting how this turns out. Now I got to freeze this, as Steve would say. Actually, I am going to move my little. So this is almost there. So she recommends getting, you know, some sort of thin blade like this, and you're going to cut in between to separate it, kind of like she said you're doing a, a when you're baking to cut the pan away. Oh, I need to put monomer on there first, and on my blade. Kind of like the toothpick method. So she said if you cut it and it you can't separate it, um, then you need to wait a little bit longer. I think I am ready for this. So I'm going to wet that down, wet this down. Okay, here is the transfer process. Let's see if this works. All right, so you pick up on the tabs here. I'm gonna switch my arms, see if I can do this in one go. And then transfer it over. Push it down on the teeth. And then, take your blade and you're gonna separate this. Use a lot of monomer. There we go. Separate this again. Sorry for the bottle in the way. Let's see if I can get this in the camera. There we go. There we go. All right. A little monomer, a little bit on your fingers. Again, use your gloves. I'm going to pinch a little bit of this off. almost on the rubbery stage. I usually have a vent or something. This is pretty strong right now. All right, now I didn't need it to, so now I'm going to fill in because these gelbs kind of go deep down the lingual side. So I'm just going to fill in. Now I'm using the same acrylic, you know, for both the splint and this thing. I would say the temperature in here is actually perfect. It's giving me just a little bit of working time since I am out of practice with this but so far I like it 
Now maybe Priscilla can comment in the comments below any helpful tips or if anybody out there is using this silicone mold from Priscilla. Um, if you could comment some tips and tricks for me. Um, oh, it's slagging on me. Let me freeze that. Forgot to freeze it. All right. There we go. So, uh, yes, I use my fingers a lot. <laughs> I see some trapped air bubbles in here. I hope they're not too bad when I get done. And that might be from just um, trapping air in the silicone mold. Let's let that sit or rest for a little bit. Now, here is the important part. I'm going to put, now remember to separate the upper. And I've already got this pin set to the right thickness. There. Now you can push up on it if you need to meet a I'm just kind of molding it with my finger. Pull it apart. I got good. Yeah, that looks good. Good occlusion there. Good clean occlusion. Push up on the back here. It's touching all the cusps. Cusp is such a hard word to say. Now this rubbery, the almost rubbery is a great, so I can actually cut. Oh, kind of hard <laughs> dealing with acrylic um, when it's in two separate stages that different times so I have a wet stage here on the lingual surfaces and I have a rubbery stage so I'm trying to there we go add a little bit there so far so good I like it <laughs> didn't mean to do that So then you can take your, it's good to mark, that's what she put in her instructions. Go ahead and mark where you want it to end, and that way when you go to cut this, you know exactly where to cut it. So you can add a bit there. Okay, I think freeze it one last time I keep getting that slumping around the freeze that lingual surface that's my problem so I'm gonna put this in the pressure pot real quick Uh, Perry, the name of the mold is, where is it at? Easy, easy form mold. Um, I want to say it's between 50 and $60. So it's easy, easy form mold for splint acrylic fabrication. Um, so it, she has full instructions front and back comes with the mold um, 
and it comes with uh, I forget. Uh, and you can reuse these, uh, but they wear out faster than the mold does. It the mold should last for years, even though it'll be stained with acrylic and stuff. Four, five, six, about six of these things, and uh, you know she said that you can just use a paper towel and clean up throw some monomer on there clean up the mold under uh, soap and water so yeah easy form mold and easy form liners and she has a starter kit so you can um, get the starter kit from her and it has everything you need to try it out now I would say be patient with it because it is going to be hard um, to switch methods but since I'm restarting uh, I'll wash this out later when I get to a sink. So since I'm restarting my lab, uh, and I, I'm, it's just me and my wife, I'll be I'll be the one doing the splints. And I haven't I, I usually train someone to do the splints and then let them take that over, and I don't have to worry about it. But since I'm starting over fresh, new, uh, I remember using this and liking it, and uh, so I asked Priscilla. If she still had some, and she does, <clears throat> so call her um, jbcandcompany.com. Uh, the phone number is right here: seven zero two nine one four eight eight four two. So um, you can call that number and order these. Ask her questions, how to use it, and stuff. Um, I think I have some video of her doing the splints. Um, and I don't know if I ever posted it. You might want to check through my video feed. You might find it back in 2015, 14, somewhere along there. She demoed this at our DLAT conference. So um, that's it. I will try to post pictures of the finished product, uh, maybe some progress photos, uh, definitely on my Patreon page. Uh, if not, maybe I can post them in my YouTube feed for y'all. Uh, so if you're a patron, thank you for being a patron, and you'll get the, the photos to this uh, later on as I finish it. And um, if you're interested in becoming a patron, check the link below, and you can support me as much for as little as a dollar a month. And you get special features such as um, live recording. So sometimes I'll do things like this, do live recording, and then I'll send out later on an edited video of what we recorded but you can you and I can uh, interact and talk uh, kind of like Perry and I were talking today Perry Lane uh, thanks for being in the chat today so uh, with that what else what else is going on oh check uh, next week for our interview Steve and I's interview uh, and uh, if you have any questions about this you know ask them in the comments below until then, this was a short Wire Wednesday. Enjoy your lunch. Get back to get back to work and uh, happy bending. <laughs>